Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video we are going to retrieve some debris that we have left behind in orbit and clean things up. Oh, I don't need that RCS port hanging out there. And uh, I thought about using a shuttle, but actually packing stuff into a shuttle is a little bit inconvenient. I decided at the moment to try a 5 meter engine plate with these four little mini tugs that will grab onto stuff and of course dock them back to this engine plate. And then we are going to have this inflatable heat shield at the bottom. I'm expecting things to be no bigger than 2.5 meters in diameter. So that's the form factor, maximum form factor we've got. And we've got 12 parachutes, as you can see there. We're using a nerve. And we've got some RCS here, of course, and also on the tugs. And we have liquid fuel down here. And I actually unlocked the draining system for the first time. So the drain valve is there and the drain mode is vessel so once everything is docked up and ready to return uh, we will drain the stuff so that we don't have to carry extra parachutes right so right now we have enough parachutes for 18 tons but this whole contraption right here is 20 tons uh, so once we dock stuff to it it'd be way overweight uh, but once we uh, drain the propellant it'll be fine so the mob propellant and the liquid fuel so, well, I mean, maybe fine, as long as things don't aren't too big, but we'll see what we have in orbit. Well, so then there's this. Uh, we have a lot of Delta V with the nerve, but of course that's not going to get us into orbit. Uh, 5,387 in order to change um, our location a lot. I don't anticipate needing to change inclination a whole lot, though, so maybe it's overdoing it. But again, we can drain the fuel if necessary. Uh, but partly it can help us finish orbit. And to that end, I decided to just use a simple dumb booster, the Clydesdale. It has one degree of gimbling. I put extra fins just in case because we've got a big fairing. And this is awkward. So this is the plan. We'll see how it goes. You can see a uh, vacuum delta V3000, so that's not too bad. And uh, off of the ground at sea level 1.57 because I've turned down the thrust limiter just a little bit. We don't want to have too much resistance from the lower atmosphere initially, especially with the big fairing. And let's see how this goes. So Retriever 1, let's just get on with it. The goal here is to get this done quickly. The first priority are those pods, because pods are expensive. And so we've got uh, all these derelict things, but then those don't really require the nerve to get to them. Maybe we should see about these high orbit things like this Dres refueler debris and uh they're, they're all in fairly compatible orbits so it's not too hard but yeah merpon sterilect you know what maybe we should just start off with merpon sterilect the stuff in high orbit or kerpalo debris yeah well first merpon sterilect i didn't put any way of replenishing electric charge though except for the nerve I'll have to think about that. Might be okay, might not be okay. We'll find out. Okay, throttle up. Not that throttle is going to matter. SAS on. And... Launch. Off we go. We'll go straight up for a little bit because the gimbling is limited. And eh, maybe I should turn more aggressively initially. Okay, we really need to get horizontal here. Serious G-forces. Well, don't have too much extra to do to make orbit. Okay, fairings. We have to decouple and then we have to sort of spin around too. Alright, decoupling. Control point reversed. Okay. Knock that off. Make sure that we have comms. We have a lot of controllers though. I should have had some way of replenishing electric charge, but hibernate and warp for everything. Okay, that'll be good enough for now. Let's see, our first target. 
uh, Ripon Sterlect is there, so we probably wanted to burn out over here. Nope, nope, if we've got a lot of debris. Uh, okay, so Ripon Sterlect had better not been, be some Mark III space name part, but I don't think that's the case. I don't think they've there have been a lot of those. Oh, it's got a fairly sizable inclination. 8.9 degrees. Okay, well. I took the inclination for granted. Okay, we've got a good enough situation there with uh, separation that's within render range. So we'll have to do 711 there and then 95 up there. And then uh, about 300 meters per second to rendezvous. We are definitely going after the tougher ones first. Thankfully, this control core can point at a maneuver node. That's going to be helpful. And go. Okay, on to the mid-course adjustment. Yeah, it seems like power will be fine. Okay, do we have a rendezvous? Well, it's a little bit further than I thought. I'll take the 7.4 kilometers for now. All right, let's meet up with it. What kind of debris is it? Have we made a horrible mistake? Okay, well, that's certainly close enough. It's just a Mark 1 pod. So... Couple? I have relay antennas on the... on the bus, so... that these things can... communicate effectively. And let's control from here, and, oh, mm. uh, no, no, wrong axis this way, really carrying way too much mob propellant to be honest, even these little thrusters are too powerful. Okay, we got that. Now let's control from here and target that docking port. No, oh, SAS would still be necessary. <laughs> uh, that looked parallel, sort of. Well, we're going to be a little bit off center, but that's why we have the big tank of RCS there too. Okay, we are docked. Next. So let me just make sure we're controlling from here again. Aha, all right. So what should we pick up next? Well, there's this Kerpalo debris really high up. That could be really big. Now let me switch to it and see. I don't know if it's some big tank uh, full stage or something. It's, uh, well, I mean, this is a 1.875 meter tank. I'd like the end, uh, well, no, it's a 2.5 meter tank, sorry. But that's still within our size limits. And we get the poodle back, so that's nice. Heavy, though. We'll see. Uh, I guess we are now called Murpont's Derelict. Okay, so Kripalo debris. Um, we need to adjust inclination. It's probable that the Mark 1 command pod isn't going to throw us off too much, but let's see. So can we hold on without adding RCS? Seems okay, yeah. These powerful reaction wheels and everything. Probably on re-entry we'll be tilting to one side though. And it's probably going to be the poodle side. Okay, so... Target's going to be behind us. Well, let's see how long it takes to phase. I don't want to boost up to an even higher orbit. Okay, well, that's pretty close. Um... I think we do have to boost up a little, but that's fine because that'll just bring us closer to the target's orbit. Okay, that's good enough. 4.6 kilometers. 
seems nice and neat so far. So for the not so hard to get debris, we could probably do something simpler. But we'll go after Sidwise's capsule next, and that's really high up, so it's probably good that we had the whole nerve thing. Okay, burning. Okay, we are slightly drifting away, and I'll use the tug on the opposite side from the Mark 1 pod. Okay, control from here and arm. Right, so what we want to do is. Nope. Yes. We have to get this one a little bit more exact than the previous one, though, since the load is so big. It's really ridiculous how little propellant I use. I should have just gone with the little spherical mop propellant tanks instead of this cylindrical one. Okay, that is clawed. It's a little bit off. Yeah, I know I can release the thing, but we'll just go with it for now. Control from here. Just can't get in the way of the nuclear engine, that's all. Center mass wise, it's probably not a problem. Yeah, it'll fit. So, yeah, it, it's awkward, but then we, we've got the inflatable heat shield, it'll cover it. Um, I used less than 0.5 mob propellants, so yeah, uh, they just don't make tanks small enough for me. The nerve plume is going to sort of blast the poor poodle there, but anyway, we will proceed with Sidwise's capsule. And that's just a 1.1 degree inclination difference right here. Okay, so that will be our inclination correction and boost up. And we'll see how badly balanced it is now. Okay, so you want to check the control authorities and burn. It's barely okay. There's uh, some debris over here. Gilly Station Expansion Redux. It's in sort of a comet-like trajectory. This Delta V is ticking down a lot faster than that Delta V, which makes me think something's wrong. Something's probably lying to me now. <laughs> oh dear. When I set it to uh, retrograde, it can hold it. But when I set it to stability, the normal SAS, it has trouble holding it. It's weird. Okay, what do we have here? I think it's just another Mark 1 pod. These things are dangerous, you know? Everybody keeps getting stranded in them. Oh, I blasted it, I blasted it. Uh-oh, time warp. <laughs> oh, cheats. It's not my fault, stock has cheats. All right, well, not very precise that time, but we'll take it Go from here. That one is a target. That's not bad. So next time I'll come up with something even cleverer for the easier to get debris, which won't require quite so much Delta V to get to. Yep. Okay, there we go. All right. We've got that one, and there was that comet-like one. There we go. Gilly Station Expansion. Uh, it's got periapsis of, periapsis of 109. Let me switch to it and see what it is. But with that periapsis, that'll be good because then we'll have a good re-entry. Oh no, we can't do this one yet. Uh, we'll have to do something special for this. Okay, so that's not doable. All right. Um, let's see. What else can we pick up? Let's shuttle debris. Oh, there's just a 2.5 meter tank. 
I guess we can pick this up. 8.4 degree inclination difference. Well, somewhere, oh, somewhere around here, we'll bring the orbit down. And maybe if we delay, oh, maybe if we do it sooner, we'll get something there. And we probably won't need to correct inclination immediately. Um, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. We'll just correct inclination when we meet up with it. Okay, well, we'll go with what we've got there, even though there's a 30-kilometer gap. Well, taking a lot of that reaction wheel power to hold this steady now. Okay, and that's about it there. All right, nothing weird happening with our periapsis? Nope, okay. So on we go, back down. There's this space plane claw thing here, but it's got comms and everything, so not debris debris. Well, we're at least taking advantage of the fuel we brought up here. Now it looks like we'll get an intercept point around here somewhere. Okay, I'll take that approach for now. Uh, it's less than 20 kilometers, but it's better than we had before. So obviously our activities in this video have not been the most glamorous thing ever, just picking up trash, but hey, it had to be done. Okay, well, that should be good enough. We're still drifting towards it a little bit. Okay, there we go. Last one. Because we used some RCS to help control things, this is not full on the RCS, but we didn't need it to be anyway. Okay, well that looks pretty close to the center. That's not too bad. Control from here now, and... that. Probably should have had the two 2.5 meter parts opposite each other. We'll see what happens. Well, one way or another, this stuff gets disposed of. The question is whether it's cost effective or not. And cost effective would mean actually bringing it all back safely without it all exploding. Okay, so that does it for the grabbing portion of the game. And now... Should we use some delta V to bring the orbit down before actually pulling it into the atmosphere? That is the question. I think we might as well. Let's see how bad the authority is. Well, could be worse. Using about half right now. Yes, we would want it closer to KSC which is conveniently currently in daylight, we could probably just keep burning like this if we have the delta V. Uh-oh, using fizz warp does not help it maintain retrograde. We've got armed parachutes now. How heavy are we? Only 16.38 tons. So we're not too bad. I mean, I said 18 ton limit, and we're under that. I'm just burning off some of the uh, mob propellant as well. Let me just use RCS for a little bit. Okay, that's it for the RCS. So, so much for using that to help control our re-entry, but whatever, we'll probably lose communication at Plasma Blackout and all that business anyway. And we're probably gonna miss the KSC by a lot. Okay, that's good enough for me. So, let's inflate the heat shield. Point prograde, because it's all backwards. The parachutes are armed. And we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, we even overshot the peninsula. Well, anyway. Maybe on the daylight side, at least. 
I think I've done all I want to do. So much for using the fuel valve, the drain valve. So I'm going to retract the antennae in the hope that they will be recoverable. We still have some comms. No pitch authority really being maxed out here. Oh, it's flipping around. It's got to flip around. Oh, hang on there, inflatable heat shield. Yeah, it's flipping, it's flipping. But I think we're slow enough now. It probably doesn't matter. All these parts have ridiculous heat shielding anyway. Okay, well, we uh, we cooled off by spinning or something like that. That pool stage is wiggling all over the place, though. Should probably lock that claw a little bit more. Or auto-strutted. Oh, oh. Ooh, that's dangerous. Oh, that's dangerous. That's some cracking stuff right there. Okay, but it's stopped. We don't have communication, so it's all up to the parachutes now. Parachutes are out. Oh, that's not really the way I wanted to splash down. <laughs> At least we're down to 5 meters per second. Would have liked it to be heat shield side down, but we just don't have enough mass over here. If we had a non-inflatable heat shield, it might have been okay, but... Of course, we don't have non-inflatable heat shields of this size in stock. Four meters per second, even. Oh, it just made a splashy sound even though nothing's splashed. Why? It's so confused. Now something's splashed. All right, recover vessel. Well, so that worked sort of, not the most elegant thing I'll have to admit, but for low earth orbit stuff, not low, low earth orbit, low carbon orbit, we need something that can pick up more debris instead of just four pieces because otherwise it's not worthwhile and hopefully quicker. No science. I think this is very scientific. Anyway, uh, only 25,000 funds too, but that's because we were so far from the KSC. But anyway, we cleaned some stuff up. We got that. I'm surprised. The poodle I thought was pretty expensive, but oh well. Anyway, so yeah, we'll try and get something a little bit more time efficient and something that can grab a whole bunch of stuff. Most of the stuff is in low carbon orbit after all. We went after the tougher stuff this time. We've got all this stuff just hanging out down here. Wreckage, derelict, pod, derelict, I mean, mo and then another debris here. Those are all just little pods that we can grab quickly with the right kind of thing. And I'd like something that doesn't involve wasting a stage like we did with the Clydesdale booster. So I'll think about that. And, oh, this ComSat 2 debris is landed at Kerbin. Well, we can, we can recover that, too. So, yeah. Oh, and there's some other landed at Kerbins. So, yeah, we are in the business of clearing this stuff up, and we'll see how that goes. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.